Baptist Church on this beautiful, sunshiny day. That's what we call Gulf Coast sunshine out there. That's pure Texas right there. Gotta love it. Well, grab your hymn notes. We're going to stand up, and we're going to turn to hymn number 413, and we're going to sing, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. That's hymn 413. Stand up and let's sing it like you mean it. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you this evening for your blessings. Lord, I realize, uh, Lord, that we're here tonight, and uh, Lord, the weather is, is bad, and the and the radar looks horrible. Uh, but we know, Lord, that uh, we are here. We're sheltered within the building. And uh, Lord, I just pray this evening, Lord, that uh, we would not uh, uh, fret over what we cannot change, that we'd not worry about, Lord, the uh, what's going on outside. But Lord, we'll come in with the attitude of uh, worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Uh, Lord, realizing, Lord, that the purpose of our of our uh, Wednesday night service, Lord, is to bring us into a uh, into a desire, Lord, to uh, listen, Lord, to what you have to say, and Lord, to help us and refuel us, reflame us, refire us, uh, rekindle, Lord, in us, Lord, what uh, uh, need we need, Lord, to help us to finish out the week very strongly. Father, we just pray for those who are unable to be here. I've got several phone calls from folks that uh, are not able to hear, be here because of the weather. Uh, Lord, I just pray that uh, uh, you would be with them. Uh, Lord, if they're able to watch live stream, I pray that they're watching uh, from live stream. As Miss Frankie, uh, let me know she'd be watching tonight. I'm sure. I hope I'm praying that others will be. Uh, and then, Father, we also pray tonight, Lord, for those that are ill. Uh, Lord, we'll have the prayer list in just a moment. And uh, Lord, we just pray that uh, you would work in those hearts and those lives. And Lord, help us, uh, Lord, to just trust you uh, in every avenue. And then, Father, we pray, uh, Lord, for those that are out working in the in the weather, uh, Lord, like Brother Tim, Lord, that you would be with him and uh, watch over, protect, Lord, uh, uh, help him, Lord, to be able to do his job, uh, and Lord, do it to your glory. Father, we thank you for all of this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, appreciate you being here tonight. I know I had a prayer list. No, I have one. Brother... Lee gave me one, and he'll get very upset if I don't use it. I know, but that's like, you know, March the 2nd, March the 9th, is not today, it's not, in, I, I know I have, oh, you know what, it's right here. It is right here, see, I didn't lose my mind, and Brother Lee knew I had gotten it, and he was going to get very upset with me losing the prayer list. Thank you, Brother Kirk. <laughs> Actually, I was just stalling because I sent him on an errand and I needed him back by the time that we started the prayer list. <laughs> Sounds good anyway. All right. If you would open your prayer list to the uh, prayer page right there. Uh, 
continue to uh, pray for uh, for my niece Patty. Uh, I am just I don't know if it's out there, but I am I don't know if it's the monitors here that I'm hearing, if it's this up here I'm hearing, but I'm like loud to me. Okay, it's echoing. I thought it was because it's echoing in my ears, and I'm thinking, you know. I don't know what it is, but I'm hearing myself two and three times. All right, that seems a little bit better, but it's still a little loud. Uh, but continue to pray for my for my niece Patty. She's still uh, doing the dialysis. She does need. She is on the transplant list and needs the pancreas and the kidney. And uh, so do be in prayer for her, if you will. Uh, also, Deputy Clint uh, is in need of salvation. I told Brother Jimmy uh, Banks. I said, now when I get to Mississippi, uh, I want to see Larry and I want to see Clint. Uh, Brother Larry got saved after he was shot there uh, in Columbus, and then and and uh, he was uh, being faithful to the Lord during that time. But he's since gotten away from the Lord and not being faithful. And also, uh, uh, Clint uh, it has not gotten in church yet, and nor saved. So, uh, be in prayer for both of them, uh, if you will. And uh, uh, I'm looking forward to meeting both of them while I'm there uh, next week. Uh, then, according continue to pray for uh, Journey. Uh, she's been having seizures and they're not, they're not being able to figure out why. Uh, and so be in prayer for her. The Madrano family, uh, uh, Mr. Madrano is having some health issues. Just found out he had cancer. They just adopted a child. And uh, so there's a lot of issues right there. And so remember them in prayer, Brother Jim Shirley, uh, Brother Lee, uh, and uh, Brother J.L., Brother Dale Riddick is a friend of mine that uh, has a rare form of leukemia. Uh, he went and had his second treatment, and they allowed him to go home because his blood level stayed well. Uh, he didn't get near as nauseated and, and all, uh, and so he's at home uh, until his next treatment. And uh, so be in prayer for him. Uh, right now, the blood work is showing remission, uh, but the uh, bone marrow is not making the blood like it needs to, and so still still an issue there. So continue to pray for him. And then uh, Mama Shea uh, is going through treatment. As soon as she finishes her chemo, then she'll start radiation uh, for breast cancer. So uh, continue to pray for her. If there's somebody you'd like to add to the prayer list this evening, uh, if you would, raise your hand. Uh, Brother Kurt will bring the microphone by. And uh, uh, please give us a first, last name, and just a brief uh, reason of why you're adding them to the prayer list. Uh, and the reason we do it on the microphone is because it does go out on a live stream. And if you don't use the microphone, it sounds like this. And so, yeah, and so, anyway, so if you have somebody you'd like to add to the prayer list, if you would just raise your hand, I'll call your name. Brother, Mi Brother Mike will bring you a mark. <laughs> Brother Kurt will bring you a mic, okay? All right, uh, Brother, Brother Philip has had his hand up for 30 minutes here. So would you pass him the mic, please? Well, uh, last week I uh, mentioned Alicia Craig. Um, uh, turns out the pregnancy was a false alarm. She is not pregnant. So that's uh, really bringing the family together. Uh, she's um, engaged to this uh, young man in the uh, Navy, and she's real happy about it. Um, her family's happy about it. Uh, I just want to pray that, you know, uh, continue to pray that she gets saved and her family. Amen. Uh, also, please pray for me and my education. All righty. All right, Brother McClellan. Okay, and that would be Brother Doug Hutton. Uh, yeah, just pray for our daughter and her husband. They're getting ready to move to Monterey, California. Oh, wow. He's going to language school there. It's a wonderful visit. It's a beautiful place. <laughs> yes. You're right. Okay. Uh, anybody else in this section over here? Uh, Miss Vicki? I have several friends who are um, undergoing cancer treatment. Dorothy Niederhofer, Sandy Abair, of course my friend Joan, she started another round of chemo, and Amanda McKinney. All right, and while he's waiting for the next for the mic and the next person, uh, also uh, Miss Ruth McGee, when she said McGee, it, it lit a light in me. 
uh, has pneumonia again. So do add her to the prayer list, Ruth McGee. All right. Anybody else in this section? Then let's move over to this section here. Miss Helen. All right. Remember, Miss Helen in prayer. Anybody else in this section right here? Miss Crystal. I'm sorry, Miss Sexton. Oh, please pray for my sister. Pray for my sister. She lives in Liberty. Uh, she's All righty, Miss Crystal. Um, keep in prayer. Uh, I don't know what's going on with my supervisors, but we had one of our desk ops get triple bypass surgery, and then Miss Gilchrist just had a heart attack, so we're missing people. It's like oh, we're getting really ill, and she's been there 25 years. She's always getting sick, mm. or just something's always happening. Um, also. Um, working out a lot, trying to get ready for the academy, I'm trying to go for the June class to pray for me because like, uh, it's really painful to do a push-up. <laughs> so and I'm like, wow, I haven't done this in forever, and I know that I need to have, be prepared. And, you know, there, there's a test on April 18th, but it, there's no push-ups, but you need to be able to do that. I went to the academy today, and I talked to them. So I, I need prayer because I need to pass the test, and I need to be able to fit to continue into the academy. I know. It's really hard to do a push-up. <laughs> Uh, I, I tried one of those about 30 years ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I understand, Brother Lee. Uh, yes, pray for my sister, uh, Carol Rithlick. She needs see, uh, knee surgery, but she cannot get it because her salt, sodium is low. Need more salt, and also she goes see the heart doctor uh, tomorrow. Okay. And you need to continue to pray for Brother Lee. He's on the trans or getting on the transplant list. He just finished all that up, so just waiting for that. Okay, Brother Kurt. Uh, my co-worker Rolando Williams for salvation. Okay, anybody else? Brother Kyle? Okay. All right, I do uh, want to add also that uh, you remember uh, my son Michael and I in prayer as we leave uh, Sunday afternoon to go to uh, Mississippi for the week, and uh, it's not just pleasure, it's I'm uh, going to see my 98-year-old aunt, great aunt, that's uh, uh, she in good health and everything's good. That's one good thing about the genes of the, uh, the Lamb Herberson family. And uh, so uh, she's 98 years old, just turned 98 in December, and uh, talked to her on the phone. She's doing doing well, looking forward to us coming. And uh, But then also I'll be preaching on Wednesday night for Brother uh, Jimmy Banks, and he says, by the way, to tell you all, all hi. Uh, and uh, so uh, I asked, I said, the people want to know when you're coming back. He said, we'll talk about that when you're here. And so, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, just be in prayer that uh, the message uh, the Lord gives me is the message that his people need to hear. And uh, as I warned you before, if I'm going to be out of town, there'll be somebody preaching here. Uh, don't be watching me on live stream unless you're watching an archive. Be, be kind and show up. Uh, to the services. Uh, I know through the years people have said, well, pastor's not there, so I, that's my day off. We don't take a day off. I'm going to be in church Sunday night at Lighthouse Baptist Church in Natchez, Mississippi. Okay? I already have plans. I've already talked to the pastor. Like, he knows I'm coming. Okay? So, you know, 
When I'm not here, I'm in church. If I'm homesick, I'm on live stream. I'm watching you, uh, or wa- watching you, watching whomever's there. And so, uh, don't uh, don't just stay home because I'm not here. Uh, be in your place, do the right thing, and uh, and God will bless it. But be in prayer. Uh, also, on the right hand side of the list, the uh, uh, the soul winning on Saturdays at ten o'clock. Uh, our uh, the Harris County Chaplain's uh, Department there in uh, downtown. Uh, our Wednesday night services also uh, for personal revival, church revival, and revival for America. And then, of course, uh, the ministries in all of our church. Remember those. Our missionaries, and this is not a repeat of the last two weeks, but we do have three missionaries that are working in Brazil. Uh, they are all family. Uh, Charles is the brother Charles uh, is brother Bobby's son, and uh, his wife, Isabel, are there, uh, and they're doing a great job there in Brazil. Uh, God's blessing, uh, and just continue to remember them in prayer, if you will. All right, Brother Kurt, you lead us in prayer. My dear, most gracious Heavenly Father, we love you and so thankful for your love for us, where uh, you sent your Son to die on the cross to show us just how much you love us, Lord God. We thank you so much that we can come together and meet. Uh, we still have a free country to meet and to worship you and to uh, praise you, Lord. I thank you for this opportunity we have in the middle of the week, which uh, I believe that we all greatly need. I know I do, just to uh, get us encouraged again in you, Lord. i got a long list, Lord God, of uh, folks we've lifted up, and I'm going to run through them real quick, but Lord, you know every need and and every... The things we don't need, Lord, or things we don't know, Lord, you know. You knew before you breathed the world into existence that we were going to need these things right here today. Ask you please take care of every person on this list, and list, Lord. I know there are many people in this room and listening who have unspoken uh, needs and unspoken requests. Their heart reaches up to you for, Lord. Ask you please uh, take care of those issues as well. And Lord, please give us a heart of thankfulness. So we just thank you for the wonderful things you do for us, and, and remind us, Lord, that uh, every good thing that we have comes from you. Lord, I look to Brother Kyle for his uh, living situation. Look to Miss Patty, please get her a full set of working organs. Her and Brother Lee as well, Lord, please give them both a full set of working organs. We lift up Deputy Clint, please bring the salvation. Miss Ruth, please heal her. Uh, Carol, uh, Miss Carol, please uh, touch your knees and heal them. Give the doctors wisdom about her heart. It's a little journey. Please uh, stop her from having these seizures. Lift up to the Madrano family. Uh, please heal Mr. Madrano and give them wisdom on how to raise their newly adopted son. Uh, Miss Crystal, as she's going through uh, all of her things, getting training, getting ready to go to the academy. Uh, I understand, Lord, what she's saying about push-ups. I hate them things, too. Uh, lift up to you, uh, Brother Jim and Miss Shirley. Ask you please touch both of them. I know that they both have ill health, and she does so much, Lord, because he can't. Ask you please strengthen both their bodies. Give him a breath so he can breathe. Give her strength to do the things that's necessary to keep them both up. And please bless their spirits as well, my Lord God. Encourage them. I pray. Uh, I'll lift up to you, Alicia Craig. Please bring her to salvation. Uh, I'll lift up to you, uh, Francis, who's sick. Please uh, uh, heal there, my Lord. I'll lift up to you, Brother JL, for healing. And Dale Riddick, as he's got, going through the cancer, uh, ask your healing on, upon him. Uh, I've heard a lot of people recently, Lord, who have situations like his where the bone marrow stops making good blood cells. Lord, I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, everybody t- who goes through it tells me it's extraordinarily rare, but this is the third person, Lord, that either I know personally or I know someone who knows personally. Uh, Lord, that doesn't sound rare to me. It sounds like uh, something you need to take care of, and I ask your healing upon him and those other two. I lift up Miss Helen, who's still in a lot of pain. I ask you please uh, heal her body. I lift up to you, Mama Shea, please uh, heal her of cancer and uh, get it all gone, get her through the chemotherapy where she doesn't have uh, the sickness and everything, Lord. Uh, I'll to you, uh, Brother Philip, with his schooling. Please give him wisdom, uh, especially in the math area, my Lord. Please uh, uh, grant him uh, wisdom and knowledge in that, so that uh, and get him through those that stuff, my Lord. I'll to you, the Hudson's daughter, her family, and I uh, ask you please bless them. Please get the Hudson's there soon to visit with them, Lord. I lift up to you, Dorothy, Sandy, Joan, and Amanda, all who are suffering with cancer, Lord, of different types. And I ask your healing touch on all of them. And, uh, Lord, I ask that you please uh, give Miss Vicki the uh, wisdom and fullness of the Holy Spirit to minister to them in the way that they need so that she can be a light in their life 
can show you off to them and any of them. These four ladies or any of their family who are unsaved, ask you please bring them to salvation. Other two, Miss Gilcrest, Miss Gilcrest, with her heart problems, please touch her. Uh, I lift up to you the officers, uh, Lord God, in, in our prisons, on our roads, uh, everywhere they they go, Lord, they're in, in great danger. I ask your uh, protection upon them. I ask you to please um, give them wisdom uh, about dealing with uh, some of the people who are the most uh, disrespectful towards life and towards others, Lord. They deal with them on a very regular basis. I ask you please to give them patience and peace and bring them, my Lord God, to salvation. I lift up to you, a Pastor and Mike, as they're traveling. Please keep them safe. Uh, please give the Pastor the uh, message you would have him preach uh, this coming Wednesday, a week from tonight there. Uh, in Brother Jimmy Banks' church, and I ask that you please uh, just do a wonderful work there, as you always do through him here, my Lord God. Uh, I lift it to the Harris County Chaplain's Office. Would you please uh, bless the chaplains with wisdom and the fullness of the Holy Spirit as they go and they, they reach out to uh, what our society deems the worst of us, the ones who have done the things uh, that puts them behind bars, away from, segregated from us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you please reach those men and those women that are down, that are back there behind bars, that you please bring them to salvation, you change their heart, change their mind, and Lord, not only that you give a great revival, use them to do a great revival there in the prisons and the jails, but Lord, bring them out here where we need it just as bad, if not worse, than they do back there. And Lord God, I pray you work up an amazing work here in America, raise up mighty men and women who are willing to stand forth and just proclaim the truth of your Son, Christ Jesus, to the world. That we all, my Lord, your children, we all grow boldness and in faith that we just be happy to present you to everyone uh, in our lives, Lord God. I pray for our Wednesday night services. Uh, Lord God, I ask you please uh, just grow us uh, and, and, and just use us, my Lord. Your children need this encouragement in the middle of the week, and I ask you please provide it, my Lord God. Uh, thank you for the rain you've been giving us. I uh, ask you please keep us safe as we do our driving, uh, as we go home tonight, and, and as we go through the rest of this week, my Lord God. I lift it to, lift it to you again, our nation, uh, our leaders. Uh, Lord, I ask you please bring uh, our President uh, Obama and his family to salvation, and I ask you please give us uh, wise and godly leaders in every level of our nation, of our states, of our cities. Lord God, uh, give your people the boldness and wisdom to take control and to do the right things and stop letting uh, those who would demean your word, who look down upon you, who uh, who curse your name, to stop letting them have control, Lord God, and to stand up and be the people you would have us to be. Lord, I ask you please for Brother Jim for the Holy Spirit tonight. Please for Brother Steve as he teaches across over in the other building to the children. And Lord God, please teach each one of us what we need to hear. And I pray each and every person leave here, Lord God, a little closer to you than when we came, invigorated and revived to go back forth into the world and to once again, my Lord, show your light and not hide it under a bushel, but be the truth of the gospel that they need to hear. In the name of Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Go ahead and grab the hymn one more time and turn with me to hymn number 139. If you find hymn 139, go ahead and stand up and let's sing, I know whom I have believed. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 5. Amen. Hey. 
If you've committed everything you got to Jesus, say amen. Wow, that was pathetic. Just saying, that was pathetic. We had an incident today at work. A, uh, let's just say, overly inquisitive lady decided that she was going to, uh, uh, she got an email in from a person she didn't know, and she decided, first of all, that she was going to open and look at it. That was mistake one. Now, at this point, she could have turned around and gone back and just deleted it and not had a problem. But that wasn't enough for this lady because it had a zip file attached to it. So she thought that zip file would look really, really pretty on her desktop. So she downloaded it and put it on her desktop computer. That was mistake number two. But she couldn't stand to just admire it from afar and watch how pretty it was sitting there glimmering on her desktop. She decided that like Pandora, she needed to know what was inside. So she opened that zip file. That was mistake number three. Now, at this point, she's still okay. She could have just closed that up. She could even open it time to time and look in it and admired what was going on, and everything would have been fine. But she saw inside there, there was a file of the type of a JavaScript. Now, if you know what a JavaScript file is, you know that just immediately says flashing danger, 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 danger. Now, if you don't know what a JavaScript file is, that's okay because it looks funny on your computer. It looks totally different. Instead of having a nice three-syllable ending like exe or uh, doc or e, uh, uh, any other thing like you're used to, it only has two letters, js. And the little icon for it, it looks funny. It doesn't look like any other icon. It looks different. But this intrepid young lady decided she has gone this far and nothing bad had happened. So she went ahead and double-clicked on that JavaScript file. Now, I have no way of knowing how many times she did this. Um, typically, what happens in that instance, you double-click on it, it little, little wait icon comes up for about half a second, then goes away, and nothing happens. And as intrepid as she has been up to this point, I'm sure she did that several times. But we know from conversations that happened a little bit later, it was at this particular moment that she started to think that maybe she hasn't been the brightest bulb in the box. But instead of confessing and calling the help desk to find out if there was a problem and saying she had made a mistake, she decided she was going to wait and see what would happen. Nothing had gone wrong yet, so obviously everything was going to be okay. Five hours later, she calls the help desk and tells them that her email is not working. Now, just, just a clue for those of you who aren't in IT, uh, every time somebody says, my email's not working or my internet's not working, that means you broke something. You did it. Okay, you did it. Every IT person in the world knows that, that means that it's a user error. Just saying. Email's not working. Well, investigations start and we learn about this JavaScript that she has run. And in the five hours it took her to report it, she managed to infect thousands of files across three different major servers in our company. We had to shut down network uh, server access for everyone in the company to stop the virus from spreading. Book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, He, God, it's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We laugh at this lady, but we do the same thing she did. I'm okay. I, I, oh, I, I opened the email, but nothing bad happened, so I'm a little bit further down that path, a little bit further down that path, a little further down that path. And we're okay up to the point, some point we don't understand, we don't know when that point's going to be. But then we go one step too far, and we know it when we do it. But we think, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm okay. God's really not going to let the thing that should happen to me happen to me. But if we had to confess it right then, we didn't confess it when we just opened up the email and said, nope, delete that. Spiritually speaking, of course. But we go too far. And then we whine at God because our family's in a mess when we've destroyed the data in our life because we went too far 
and we didn't ask God to clean it up. We didn't confess it. Remember in our lives that everybody's got problems. Remember, God's not a, a big bully waiting for you to mess up so he can beat you. He's actually just waiting for you to confess it so he can fix it. As we receive the offering tonight, let's remember that God loves a cheerful giver. And uh, I'm going to ask Brother Richard Priest to lead us in prayer. Father, we come to you this evening just thanking you that we were able to get out here to see the Lord and try and honor and praise you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you that you give us one more day live to try and save and also Lord we just ask you to receive you now once again to lift Brother Lamb up Lord give him the words that you would have us to hear and to touch each and every one of our hearts in a tender way and we ask all these things in Jesus name Amen to Matthew chapter number 4, Matthew chapter number 4, we're studying uh, the Sermon on the Mount, we're doing an intro into it, this is our third uh, message in the intro, Matthew chapter number 4, while you're turning there, uh, I'd like to read this, thank you uh, from uh, Brother Philip Jones and his family, uh, when they were here with us on Sunday, it says, thank you for giving uh, our family the opportunity to come and share what God has called us to in Pasadena, California. We are so grateful for your desire to uh, partner with us. Thank you for uh, the delicious meals and generous love offering. We felt loved. We are thankful for your friendship and prayers for us. Uh, we will be praying for you as you continue to reach Baytown with the gospel. God bless you, your friends, Philip McKenzie, Levi, Noah, and Luke. And uh, so do be in prayer for them, if you will, as they travel. Uh, they will be uh, soon beginning uh, their church in uh, Pasadena, California. Uh, we also have another church planner that will be coming through on May the 8th, uh, Brother David Arzalo, uh, Arzello, uh, and uh, he uh, will be starting in Ventura, uh, California, uh, over the next uh, several months. Uh, there's This is the what we would call L.A., County or the LA Los Angeles area, uh, Pasadena, West Covina, where Brother uh, Jack Lamb is, uh, in that area. I lived in that area when I was a kid. My, my stepdad was stationed at uh, the Port Wyoming Naval Base there, even though he wasn't in the Navy. Uh, he was an excellent carpenter, and that's what CBs do is carpenter. So uh, he was very uh, uh, awesome cabinet maker, finished, uh, finished work, and all of that. And uh, so uh, I have experience in that area as well as the Mojave Desert. And if, if God ever allowed me to go anywhere uh, besides the uh, city of Baytown, where I love and I desire to go nowhere, uh, but uh, the Houston area, uh, the Mojave Desert would be my next choice. I love the desert there. You go, really? What did you lose in the desert? I lost absolutely nothing there, but I loved it when I was there. Now, that was, you know, back 40 years ago when I was a kid, too, and that may change, but uh, anyway, uh, I'm desirous to stay right here uh, in the uh, city of Baytown and finish my life right here. I've been here for 43 years. It's been good, and uh, I desire to stay here. So don't get the idea that I'm looking to go somewhere. Now, if you're looking for me to go somewhere, you're probably going to be sadly mistaken, because God and I made this decision uh, back in uh, May of, of 2005 that I was where he wanted me and if I stayed here 
then I would die here. Uh, <coughs> so uh, I will have, uh, now from that point on, I will have someone to test my food and my drink. <coughs> Just kidding. All right, please stand with me in reverence to reading the Word of God. We're talking about the Sermon on the Mount. We're doing an introduction into that. And we are talking today about the message of repentance. The message of repentance. That is the title of the message this evening. Uh, Matthew chapter number 4, verse number 12 begins reading with this. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum which is upon the seacoast in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that phrase tonight is the focus of the message, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let us pray. Father, we thank you tonight for your blessings. We thank you, Father, for the word of God. Uh, the Brother uh, Raymond Barber always said, when we open the Bible, we're opening your mind. Father, uh, Lord, reveal to us through uh, your word what is on your mind tonight. We give you the thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. The message of John, of course, in chapter 3, in verse number 2, uh, to those that, were ca that came to him and as he was baptizing them was, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then Jesus now has come on the scene, and he's gone through, he's been baptized by John the Baptist. We talked about that last week. Uh, he's gone through uh, the temptations uh, uh, there in the wilderness, and He's been tempted like as we are, yet without sin, according to the word of God. And now then, he begins his earthly ministry here on the earth. His earthly ministry was not a very long period of time. Uh, it's only about three, three and a half years that he was here ministry on the earth. And the message that he, that he brought was the same message of John the Baptist, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we talked about the the truth about the kingdom of heaven at hand in the first message that we brought. Uh, and so I'm not going to dwell on that tonight, but I'm going to focus on that one word, repent. Repent. You see, the message of John the Baptist and the message of Jesus Christ and the message of the disciples and the message of the New Testament church has been, is, and should always be one message and that is repent. You see, the purpose and the plan of the Lord Jesus Christ was to bring to our knowledge and our understanding that we are sinners deserving of hell. Isaiah put it, uh, you know, that all of our righteousnesses are filthy rags. Jeremiah put it as that the heart is, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And so as we study the Word of God, and as we've looked through the Word of God, and as we've found in the Word of God, man is a sinner deserving of hell. Now the message in, the, in, in our day and time, in many of the churches that are around us and surround us, is not a message of repent, but live your life, God knows you're human, and everything's going to be okay in the end. Unfortunately, that is not the message of the Word of God. The message of the Word of God is to repent. Now, we're going to talk about that word in just a moment, but I want to show you some things uh, in the Word of God. If you have your Bible handy, you might want to uh, uh, look these verses up. I'm going to go fairly quickly because I have them in my iPad, and I'm just going to go and read these verses, comment, read, and comment, read, and comment, and so and there's a number of them. If you want to write the, verse, the, the addresses down and go back and look at them, uh, you're welcome to do so. Now then, in the... The message of John the Baptist, the message of Jesus was repent, and then that message came out in, in the New Testament churches as in the book of Acts. Notice in Acts chapter 19 and verse number 4. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on the him which should come after him, 
That is on Christ Jesus. Okay, he preached, he baptized with the baptism of repentance. And we talked about uh, that uh, in the first message, the baptism, or the second message, the baptism of repentance. It, it was not that uh, they were coming, and as the Church of Christ teaches and some other churches teach, that you that uh, uh, it's baptism is necessary to salvation. That's not what it's talking about here. He's not talking about n the, that baptism is required in salvation. It is an answer of a good conscience towards God. It is the first act of obedience that a person who is saved follows Christ in baptism because uh, it is the first act of obedience. People who uh, refuse to be baptized struggle in their Christian life simply because they have not obeyed God in the very first thing that they need to do. They need to be baptized. Now, baptism has no effect on the individual as far as sin is concerned. I tell people this all the time. The baptistry is full of water. We're going to baptize at the end of the service, uh, and, and, and we'll see that. But the truth is, is that the person that's baptized, there's not a cake of soap up there. There's not supernatural. In fact, when you look at that water, you go, man, that's just grody looking. That's Baytown water for you. We can't clean it up. You know, I mean, it just looks like that. Now, it's clean water. It's not, it's not bad water. It's not defiled water. You know, but by going through the baptistry, it's not washing you from your sin. It's not cleansing you. And, and I know what Acts 2.38 says. But if you, if you use proper hermeneutics, the science of the study of the Word of God, you will find, it says, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. For there does not mean to have your sins forgiven. It is because of the remission of sin. Because you have repented, you have come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the message here is, is the baptism of repentance. In other words, John the Baptist, is, is, seems like I'm rehashing this anyway, but said, uh, you know, you show me works worthy of repentance. You show me that you're here for the right reason. You see, the problem that we've had in our churches through the years is, is people come down the aisle and, and they say, I want to join the church, and you shake their hand, and you have a prayer with them, and you send them back to their seat and say, now they're saved. But that's the way that the Southern Baptist churches did it years ago, and I'm not condemning them. That's just the way it was. In fact, my father-in-law was a Southern Baptist, and he said when he... Uh, was uh, uh, like 14 years old. He went down front. He wanted to be saved. He had conviction in his heart, and he told the preacher that he wanted to get saved, and the preacher shook his hand and put him in the baptistry and said, everything's great. But he didn't know what he was doing. He didn't know that he needed to repent. He did not know that he needed to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of his life. No one took the Bible and showed him how to be saved. It wasn't until he was 23 years old that he heard the truth of the Word of God and heard that he needed to repent and confess his sin and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of his life through faith that he actually got saved. There's a lot of people out in our communities, when you go knocking on doors and you talk to them and you say, if you were to die today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? They said, yes. And you say, how do you know that? Because I, you know, I'm kind of like that, that person Brother Kurt just talked about. I, I get a little inquisitive. And I said, well, how do you know that for sure? And then they give me all kinds of answers. Well, I'm a good person. I live a good life. I, you know, I pay my bills. I mean, you get all kinds of answers. I even got the answer when my granddaddy was a Baptist preacher, and because he was a Baptist preacher, I'm going to heaven. Well, I hope my sons don't depend on the fact that I'm a Baptist preacher so they can get into heaven. Everybody's on their own. You're, you're not getting in on somebody else's coattails to get into heaven. But you see, there's a, a myriad of answers out there, and if it's not that you have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, that you've repented of your sins, confessed your sins, something's wrong. And what I find is a lot of people have, have, have gone down and shook the preacher's hand, and the preacher said, now you're going to heaven, and that's good enough for them, and they never serve God, they never come to church, they never... Nothing changes in their life. And I asked the question that John the Baptist asked, where do the works meet for repentance? What, what, had, what did you do 
Why do you need to repent? Good question. You see, the problem that we have is in our churches today, we're, you know, everybody's a good person. I mean, there's even, even one out there teaching that, that you can have your best life now. I don't want my best life now because my best life is, is horrible. I've been saved for 43 years. I've been uh, you know, on the road to heaven for 43 years. I've, I, 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 have, I have served God. I've, I've trusted God. I've done everything through, through, for 43 years, but I've not been perfect. There's been trials. There's been tribulation. There's been, <laughs> been a lot of things that I've endured over the last 43 years. This is not my best life. My best life's in heaven. <laughs> when I receive that glorified body, when I receive the full, total forgiveness and the, and the results of my salvation, you see, I'm saved now. And I know I'm saved. If I die and drop dead right now, I know I'm going to heaven. There's no doubt in my mind. But I still have the propensity to sin. And you still have the propensity to sin in your life, or you have the ability, if you don't like the word propensity, you still have the ability in your life to sin. But when we get to heaven, <laughs> that's all over with. Because there is no sin. There is no sickness. There is no dying. And so we look at it from that standpoint. Now, come down, if you will. Uh, notice, if you will, uh, Paul's message to Agrippa in Acts chapter 26. I'm going to turn there because I want you to, to see the full message here. I didn't mark it, so I'm going to have to turn to it. Book of Acts, chapter number 26, if you will. And I'm going to begin reading in verse number 19. Now, I will give you the message here. Paul is giving the message. He's standing before Agrippa, and he's giving him uh, what happened to him on the road to Damascus. He's giving Jesus' accounting for there. Verse number 19 says, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus, and at Jerusalem, and throughout all the coasts of Judea, then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none of the other things than those which were which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be first, be the first that should rise from the dead, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Now notice what he said in verse number 20. He, what was the message? That we repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. In other words, is what, what, what John the Baptist said. What are the works mean for repentance? What? Why do you? Why do? You, why are you repenting? You catch a guy that's committed a murder, and you take him into the examining room, into the Inquisition, and you ask him about his crime. Now, yeah, it's on video. They're eyewitnesses to the to the crime. And he'll sit there and look at the inquisitor and say, I didn't do it. It wasn't me. We have witnesses. We, we can see your face on the video. Well, it must be something by the looks like I wasn't there. It, I didn't do it. You see, they're not, they're not confessing, they're not ready to repent because they're not willing to say, I did that. That was my sin. That was what I, and, and there's a lot of people that, that want, to, want Jesus, they want to go to heaven, they don't want to go to hell, but they're not willing to say, hey, I did that. I'm a sinner. Deserving of hell. In fact, most of our churches won't even preach on hell nowadays. But the message of hell was more prevalent in Jesus, when Jesus' message than heaven was. Now the message of repentance is still the most important message in the Bible. Hell is still real. It's still hot. 
It has not changed. But we don't like that message because it causes fear. And we don't want people to get saved because they're afraid of something. That's an inane reasoning. I can't say stupid from the pulpit, so I use the word inane. People are dying and going to hell because they are not hearing the truth of the Word of God. There's no conviction of sin. There's no reason to repent. There's no reason to turn because we're hearing a message of love. And God is love. And God would not send anyone to hell. And my answer to, the, to that statement is this. God does not send anyone to hell. You make the choice. Because it is a choice that you make. The message of repentance. Now, our text reveals the problem. The people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. There's a, a, an attitude or, or a reasoning that there is light and darkness. And by the way, darkness is not the absence of light. Light has come into the world, John 3.19, but men love darkness rather than light. If you take your Bible and turn to John chapter number 1, notice something. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. The same, uh, And all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Do you know why people don't like the Bible? <laughs> because it tells us that we came from that God created us. We are created by God. John 1. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made, and him was life, and the life was the light of men, and light shined in darkness, and the dark darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, from God whose name was John. The same came to for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world that uh, knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, but the will of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You see, he was that light. When he came into the world, he brought that light with him. And now we see where we err. Since my wife passed away, uh, I have been the um, chief cook and bottle washer. And I pride myself on the fact that I do keep my house clean. At least I try. And the other day, the, the back windows were open, the blinds were open, as they always are. I open them every morning and let the, the sun shine in on the uh, on the plants that sit there in the window as, as well as kind of put some light in the house. And, and, and I was standing in the living room and I looked towards the dining room table towards the, the back, uh, out the back window and I looked at the top of the table and I go, hmm, I've got company coming. And the table was all clean except we had this napkin thing, this crystal thing my wife had that puts, you put napkins on it and it was sitting there and, and like this far around this napkin thing there was dust. You know what that tells me? We were wiping the table, but we weren't moving anything around. 
the dust was there. You know what revealed that? The fact that the blinds were closed and the lights were off and, and there was nothing to see, right? <laughs> That's the way I wanted it when I saw the dust. Close the blinds, turn off the lights, because in darkness you can't see. But as soon as the, the, the light shone on that table, the dust was visible. And that's what Jesus does. You see, he is the light. And what he does, and the, people, the reason that people hate Jesus and don't want to hear the message of Jesus is because he shows them where they stand with a holy and righteous God. Have you ever realized that, that they're not complaining if you pray in God's name? If you, if you say a prayer in public and you say, uh, Amen, nothing. If you say Heavenly Father, nothing. If you say in the name of Allah, nothing. If you say in the name of Buddha, nothing. But when you say in the name of Jesus Christ, there's a problem. They don't want to hear the name of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is the light that shines in darkness and shows them their light. And men love darkness rather than light. Now, the songwriter said, Jesus is the light of the world. The whole world was dark. In the darkness of sin, the light of the world is Jesus. The message is that of repentance. And Brother Kirk took so long that I didn't get to, I'm not going to get to the total message here, so I'm going to have to do another part of the information here. Uh, but we're going to talk, the message is that of repentance. Now, the Greek word used has the meaning of to change one's mind to repent. Secondly, to change one's mind for better. Heartily to amend with abhorrence of one's past sins. Let me repeat that. To change one's mind, that is to repent. To change one's mind for better. Heartily to amend with abhorrence for one's past sins. See, the problem is, is that these were coming to John the Baptist and I want to be baptized. He said, well, why? Well, because you're baptizing people, everybody else is doing it, so it must be okay, so I just want to be baptized. By the way, the word baptized means to dip, plunge, or submerge. It doesn't mean sprinkle with water or pour something on your head. That's taking a shower. I take one of those every morning. Okay? The truth is that you come in repentance. You have a desire to turn from your sin, abhor your sin, hate your sin, and say the same thing about your sin that God says. Romans chapter number 10, verses 9 and 10. That if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The word confess means to say the same thing that God says. Let's go back to our thief that was caught and, and in the Inquisition room. What that Inquisitor is trying to get him to do is to, to say the same thing he's saying. I saw you on video. We have all of these witnesses. We have it documented that you have committed the crime. Just tell us. <laughs> it's amazing for the Kurtz mess, long message on confess through the IT program. We want to hold out until the very end. And we're all guilty of that. Because when we were kids, we did that with our parents. <laughs> our parents could see us do something. Mamas, without even having to see it with the eyes in the back of their head, they just know you did it. But you're not going to tell them. Because that's going to get you in trouble. 
And it took me about 30 years to realize this, but you know I was already in trouble. It just made it worse. So I taught my kids, look, just tell me. It's a whole lot easier to say it now than to wait an hour or two hours or three days to say it. I already know what you've done. Just confess it. By the way, God already knows what you've done. It is not a secret to God about your sin. God already has the record of it. And what he wants to do is take that record and wipe it clean, and you will not let him because you will not confess it as sin. Brother Kurt used that message of, of 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sin, he, that is God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now look at this message. We confess he is faithful. The Bible says God is faithful. Faithful. God is faithful. He's faithful and he's just. He shows justice in the fact that he is God and you've come to him, you confess that sin, and now he's saying, I'm faithful and I'm just. I'm going to show justice and I'm going to forgive your sin. But he doesn't stop there. He says, and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You see, the problem is, number one, we don't want to, we don't want to confess it. And by the way, when we do that, it means turn from it. 1 John 1, 9 is not a little rabbit's foot, a talisman that just gets you out of, out of a tight spot just because you want to get favored with God. Hello? He's, faith, he's faithful, he's just to forgive. The Bible tells us that, that God removes our sin as far as the east is from the west. East is from the west. That's north and south. East is from the west. To be remembered no more. The Bible says that God puts our sins into the very depths of the ocean. And do you know that there's some, some places of the ocean that there is no bottom? It's bottomless. Where are they? He's faithful and he's just to forgive us our sin. But not only that, he cleanses us. It's kind of like falling in the mud. Take a, 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 just a, as an illustration, you have a little girl, and it's storming outside like it is right now. And you've got her all dressed up, her, her hair's all fixed, she's got her pretty little bows, and she's got her pretty little Sunday dress on, and, and, and the rain has stopped for a little bit, and you're trying to get ready for church, and she says, Daddy, can I go outside and play? No, honey, you're going to go out and you're going to get dirty. Don't go out. But you're in the bedroom, you're getting dressed, you're getting ready for church, and, and then uh, she, you look around, and there's that little girl standing in your doorway, and her hair's all wet, and her, her, dress, her pretty dress is all muddy. And you look at her, and you say, Honey, what happened? Well, I went outside, and I, I, I fell in the mud. Well, didn't I tell you not to go outside? Yes. But you went outside anyway. Yeah, so she's confessed it. And so until she's six years old, and now then she's 30 years old, and you're still going to hold that against her? No, you forgave her. But you didn't just forgive her and put her in the car and take her with her hair all wet and her, 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 her pretty dress all muddy. You put her in the bathtub, and you washed her hair, and you cleansed her up, and you made her, made her new. You got her another pretty dress to put on. You put new bows in her hair, and you put new shoes on her feet, and you went out and got in the car, and you went to church, and nobody knows that she was ever in the mud because you forgave her, but you also cleansed her. 
And that's exactly what God does. But there's that repentance part. There's that repentance part. You have to repent. You have to confess it. And say, God, I messed up. And I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Can I, can I put it on the other side of the coin over here? There's an old boy that, he just has a problem with a bottle. And every dime he gets, he drinks it up. He doesn't take care of his family, he can't keep a job, he, all of that. And, and, and finally he comes in, he's, he's falling down drunk, vomiting all over everything, and he goes to his wife, and she says, I'm leaving you, Joe. I can't deal with this anymore. I'm leaving you. Oh, honey, I'll never do it again. I'll never do it again. Please don't leave. Just, just don't leave me. And so she stays. The next day, Joe comes home, falling down drunk, vomiting over everything. And she said, I've had it, Joe. You see, he doesn't intend to change. He has no desire to change. He's doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. See, that's the problem. The person that comes to God and says, God, forgive me. I repent. I confess. I'm not going to do that anymore. And you do an about face and you leave it. But old Joe over there, he's willing to confess he's done it. But he's not willing to change from it. He's not willing to leave it. And you say, well, that's a different different scenario because he's addicted. You know, my daddy was addicted to alcohol. My daddy got right with God. He turned around and walked away from it and hasn't had a drop of, to drink in over 30 years. You see, it can be done when you let God do the cleaning and you let God do the work. But there's a lot of people out there, they're sorry they got caught, but they're not sorry that they did it. See, the message is repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Have a change of heart, have a change of mind, do of an about face, turn from it. And God is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And that works every time that you come in faith, come believing, come trusting, because God is faithful and he doesn't lie. May we stand for prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for your blessings. We thank you, Father, for what you've given, for, given us and what you've done for us. And Lord, I pray this evening, Lord, as we think about the message that Jesus and John the Baptist preached, it was a message of repentance. It was the message of Peter. It was a message of Paul. It was a message, Lord, of, uh, of those in the New Testament church as well as the message of those in the Old Testament. David, in the wickedness of his sin, the prophet pointed his bony finger in his nose and said, Thou art the man. David came in repentance confessed his sin and said, God, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Lord, the, the unsaved need to repent. They need to turn from their wickedness and sin. But Lord, we as your children have sin in our life that we need to repent and turn from. Father, I pray that you'd work in our hearts and help us, Lord. To be honest with ourselves, and to be honest with you and do the work that's necessary. There may be somebody here that's unsaved. They need Jesus. I pray they come to know Christ as Savior and order their life tonight. Or there may be some here tonight that are saved and they know they're saved. They know that they have a home in heaven. They're using 1 John 1 9 as a religious talisman just to get me out of trouble right now with no desire to change. 
Lord, I pray that we'd have revival at the Garth Road Baptist Church and the revival would begin with me. That the revival would spread, Lord, through the city of Baytown, Highlands, and the surrounding areas, and then into Houston, and then throughout the state of Texas, and just keep going as the flames of fire of revival consume America again. Father, bless the invitation is our prayer in Jesus' name.